So finally, there's a randomized clinical trial that looks at the usefulness of chloroquine in the treatment of COVID-19. The study took place in Renmin Hospital of Wuhan University. 142 patients with confirmed COVID-19 were seen in the period between February 4th to February 28th, 2020. Patients were eligible if they were at least 18 years old, had a positive RT-PCR of SARS-CoV-2, a chest CT with confirmed pneumonia, and an oxygen saturation above 93%. So these were patients with mild disease. 80 patients were excluded because they either had severe or critical illness or had a contraindication against hydroxychloroquine therapy. So overall, they ended up with 62 patients who were included in the study. All patients received standard treatment, which consisted of oxygen therapy, antiviral agents, antibacterial agents, and immunoglobulin with or without corticosteroids. The 31 patients who were randomized into the intervention arm received hydroxychloroquine 400 milligrams per day on top of that. Neither the researchers nor the patients were aware of the treatment assignment. However, there's no report of a placebo having been given to the control group. They performed chest CT on day zero of the study and on day six of the study. They checked body temperature and cough three times per day each day during the study. Whenever you assess a randomized clinical trial, you should always look at the baseline characteristics at the outset of the study. Control and hydroxychloroquine patients were comparable with respect to age and gender. It would have been nice to know what the baseline CT scans showed in these two groups separately, but we're not provided with that information. This would have been valuable to see if one group had more advanced disease than the other. When compared with the control group, the body temperature recovery time was significantly shorter in the hydroxychloroquine treatment group with 2.2 days versus 3.2 days. Similarly, the cough remission time was significantly reduced in the hydroxychloroquine arm with 2.0 days compared to 3.1 days, both being statistically significant. A total of four patients, or 12.9% in the control group, progressed to severe illness as compared to zero patients in the hydroxychloroquine arm. Two patients experienced mild adverse reaction to hydroxychloroquine. One patient developed a rash and one patient experienced a headache. When they compared CT changes Seen on day 6 as compared to day 0, they found that 80.6% of patients in the hydroxychloroquine group had improved as compared to 54.8% in the control group. The p-value for this comparison was only borderline significant at 0.0476, but significant nonetheless. That's it for now. If you want to improve your understanding of epidemiology, Make sure to register for a free McMastery trial account and attend our Epidemiology Essentials course, which will bring you up to speed on things like mortality rates, case fatality rates, incidence, prevalence, and so much more. See you next time.